Louis Philippe Joseph de Layens, commonly known as Philippe, was a member of a cadet branch of the House of Bourbon, the ruling dynasty of France. He actively supported the French Revolution and adopted the name Philippe Egalité, but was nonetheless guillotined during the Reign of Terror. His son Louis Philippe became king of the French after the July Revolution of 1830. Following his career, the term Orléanist came to be attached to the movement in France that favoured constitutional monarchy. Early life Louis Philippe Joseph de Layens was the son of Louis Philippe de Layens, Duke of Chartres, and Louise Henriette de Bourbon. Through his father, Philippe was a member of the House of Orléans, a cadet branch of the French royal family. His mother came from a more distant cadet branch, the House of Bourbon Conti. He was born at the Chateau de Saint-Cloud, one of the residences of the Duke of Orléans a few miles west of Paris. His eldest sister, born in 1745, had died when six months old. His parents had another daughter, Louise Marie Therese Batilda de Layens. After his grandfather's death in 1752, Philippe de Layens inherited the title of Duke of Chartres. In 1769 he married Louise Marie Adelaide de Bourbon, daughter of his cousin, the Duke of Penthiever, an admiral of France and the richest man in the country. Since it was certain that his wife would become the richest woman in France upon the death of her father, Louis Philippe was able to play a political role in court equal to that of his great-grandfather Philippe II, Duke of Orléans, who had been the regent of France during the minority of King Louis XV. As Duke of Chartres, he opposed the plans of René de Maupiau in 1771 when Maupiau successfully upheld royal interests in a confrontation with the Parlement de Paris, and was promptly exiled to his country estate of Hilaire Cotterets in Picardy in northern France. When Louis XVI became king in 1774, Philippe was still suspected of anti-royalist sentiment in the eyes of the court. Marie Antoinette hated him for what she viewed as treachery, hypocrisy and selfishness, and he, in turn, scorned her for her frivolous and spendthrift lifestyle. Duke of Orleans in November 1785, upon his father's death, Philippe, the new Duke of Orleans, became the head of the House of Orleans, one of the wealthiest families of France, and Premier Prince du Sang, the most important personage of the kingdom after the king's immediate family, and, as such, next in line to the throne should the main Bourbon line die out. From his father, he also inherited the titles of Duke of Nemours and Prince of Joinville. Marriage on 6 June 1769, Louis Philippe married Louise Marie Adelaide de Bourbon at the chapel of the Palace of Versailles. Louise Marie Adelaide brought to the already wealthy House of Orleans a considerable dowry of 6 million livres, an annual income of 240,000 livres, as well as lands, titles, residences and furniture. Accepting their first child, a stillborn daughter, they had five children. Louis Philippe de Layens became king of the French. Louis Antoine Philippe de Layens, who died in exile in Salt Hill, England. Louise Marie Adelaide Eugenie de Layens. Francoise de Layens Mademoiselle de Layens. Louis Charles de Layens, who died in exile in Malta. The Duke was a well-known womanizer and, like his ancestors Louis XIV of France and Philippe II, Duke of Orléans, had several illegitimate children. During the first few months of their marriage, the couple appeared devoted to each other, but the Duke went back to the life of libertinage he had led before his marriage. It is during the summer of 1772, a few months after his wife had given birth to a stillborn daughter, that began Philip's secret liaison with one of her ladies-in-waiting, Stéphanie Félicité Ducrest de saint Albin, Comtesse de John Lys, the niece of Madame de Montesson, the morganatic wife of Philip's father. Passionate at first, the liaison called within a few months and, by the spring of 1773, was reported to be dead. After the romantic affair was over, Félicité remained in the service of Marie Adelaide at the Palais Royal, a trusted friend to both Marie Adelaide and Philippe.
They both appreciated her intelligence and, in July 1779, she became the governess of the couple's twin daughters born in 1777. It was the custom in the French royal and noble families to turn the boys over to the men when they were seven years old. In 1782, the young Louise Philippe was already nine and in dire need of discipline. The Duke of Chartres could not think of a man better qualified to turn his sons over to than M.M.E. de Jean Louis. This is how, nine years after their passionate liaison had ended and turned into deep friendship, Félicité became the governor of the Duke and Duchess of Chartres' children. Teacher and pupils left the Palais Royal and went to live in a house built specially for them on the grounds of the Belle Chasse Convent in Paris. It is alleged that Lady Edward Fitzgerald, born Stephanie Caroline Anne Sims, also known as Pamela, was a natural daughter of the Duke of Orleans and the Countess of Jean Lys. He recognized a son he had with Marguerite Françoise Bouvier de la Motte de Sapoy, Comtesse de Buffon, Victor Leclerc de Buffon, known as the Chevalier de Saint Paul and Chevalier de Lyons. Military service. In 1778, Philippe served in the squadron of the Count of Orvaliers and was present in the Battle of Ushant a naval battle against the British during the American War of Independence on 27 July 1778. He was removed from the Navy due in part to Queen Marie Antoinette's hatred of him and also to his own perceived incompetence and alleged cowardice. As compensation, he was given the honorary post of Colonel General of Hussars. Role in the French Revolution Louis Philippe, a member of the Jacobin Club, used his wealth and family connections to help spread the revolutionary ideas of Jean-Jacques Rousseau and Montesquieu, cousin to King Louis XVI and thus a member of the Bourbon family line. Philippe opened the Palais Royal to the Jacobins as a refuge from royalist censors. This palace, which was exempt from government censorship, allowed Jacobins to meet in Paris not only to discuss and debate revolutionary principles but also to print and distribute pamphlets to other Parisians. Although the philosophies of Rousseau and Montesquieu could not provide a concrete system for creating a moral government, the free exchange of ideas along with rising literacy rates fueled the changing social and political ideologies of Parisians. Because of his social, economic, and political power, Philippe was able to create a center for revolutionary ideology that played a large part in the undermining of the crown. Liberal ideology Philippe, like most Jacobins during the French Revolution, strongly adhered to the principles of Jean-Jacques Rousseau and was interested in creating a more moral and democratic form of government in France. As he grew more and more interested in Rousseau's ideas, he began to promote Enlightenment ideology. He often visited Great Britain, and became an intimate of the Prince of Wales. In France, he made Anglomanie fashionable, with an admiration for anything British, from liberalism to jockeys. He was also the Grand Master of the Masonic Grand Orient to France from 1771 to 1793, though he did not attend a meeting of the Grand Orient until 1777. He later distanced himself from Freemasonry in a letter dated January 1793, and the Grand Orient vacated his position on 13 December 1793. He also made himself very popular in Paris by his large gifts to the poor during times of famine. To appear egalitarian, he opened up the gardens of the Palais Royal to the public and allowed shops in the palace's arcades. Revolutionary politics Philip's inheritance of the Palais Royal gave him the means to create a massive headquarters for the Jacobin faction, only blocks away from the Tuileries Palace, where the king had been placed after being ousted from Versailles. The Palais Royal became a meeting place for wealthy nobles who had joined the Jacobin Club. There, nobles began to debate and spread the ideas of the Enlightenment, and the king lost access to some of the most influential aristocrats. Without the ability to keep the nobles in constant attendance, it became impossible for the king to monitor and reverse the growing anti-royalist sentiment. 
Philippe hired people such as the Marquis Duquesne, whose family took control of Philippe's political advisory service. As Philippe spread power and positions to the people around him, his movement lost some of his original ideology. While it initially started to spread anti-Bourbon liberalism, many people became interested in seeking power under a new form of government, which was something of little interest to their rich, quiet patron. The movement, though somewhat altered by differing motives, still retained some of Louis Philippe's original beliefs. This became apparent where the instructions and deliberations were released by his administration, though not written by Louis Philippe himself. The writings held values that were very close to his heart, the dearest being that of the freedom to travel when and where he pleased. Leadership in the Estates General at the Assembly of Notables in 1787, Philippe was very vocal in the anti-royalist, Enlightenment ideas leading to suspicions that he was plotting to displace Louis XVI. In November, he again showed his liberalism during the Lit de Justice which Etienne de la Menie de Brienne had made the king hold. For this transgression, he was again exiled to villers cotterets The approaching convocation of the Estates General made his friends very active on his behalf. He circulated pamphlets, which the Abbey CIs had drawn up at his request, in every bailliage. He was elected in three districts, by the nobility of Paris, villers cotterets and Ciari Acute Pyn Valois. During the opening procession of the Estates General, Philippe seemed anxious to march as close to the Third Estate as possible, as a display of his desire for a more democratic and representative government. After the Third Estate broke from the Estates General in the Tennis Court Hoth and created the National Assembly, Philippe was one of the first to break from the Estates General and join the National Assembly. In the Second Estate he headed the Liberal minority under the guidance of Adrian Duport, and led the minority of 47 noblemen who seceded from their own estate and joined the Third Estate. The part Philippe d'Orléans played during the summer of 1789 is one of the most debated points in the history of the French Revolution. The royal court accused him of being at the bottom of every popular movement, and saw the gold of Orléans as the cause of the raver on riot and the storming of the Bastille. His hatred of Marie Antoinette, his previous disgrace at court, and his liberalism all seem to point towards his involvement. The Duke is also alleged to have deliberately withheld grain from the people of Paris, being a direct cause of the October March on Versailles. The Duke is also thought to have lied about his whereabouts when the palace at Versailles was stormed in the early hours of the morning on 6 October, having stated he was at the General Assembly in Paris. Yet several witnesses saw him lead the bloodthirsty mob to a staircase leading to the Queen's bedroom, protected by Swiss guards. The mob cried, Long live our King de Leans! During the raid, Grace Elliot, who was one of Philip's mistresses at the time, attested to the fact that during the riot of 14 July, the Duke was on a fishing excursion, and that he was rudely treated by the King the next day when the Duke went to offer his cousin his services. Supposedly, the Duke was so disgusted by the accusation that he was seeking the crown, that he wanted to go to the United States. His favourite lover, the Countess of Buffon, however, would not go with him, so he decided to remain in Paris. The Marquis de Lafayette, apparently jealous of Philip's popularity, persuaded the king to send the duke to Britain on a mission, and he accordingly remained in England from October 1789 to July 1790. On 7 July 1790, he took his seat in the National Constituent Assembly. On 2 October, both he and Honoré Mirabeau were declared by the Assembly entirely free of any complicity in the events of 5–6 October 1789. Citoyen Egalité Philippe de Leyens subsequently tried to keep himself distant from the political world, but he was still suspect to the king and subject to pressures from his partisans to replace Louis XVI. 
His lack of political aspirations could be proven by noting that he did not attempt to obtain any leading position after the king's flight to Varennes in June 1791. In fact, Louis Philippe attempted to reconcile with the king in January 1792, but was rejected, and refused to aid the king any further, in an attempt to show his support of democratic and enlightenment philosophies. He changed his surname to Egalité and was thereafter referred to as Saint-Louis Philippe Egalité. In the summer of 1792, he was present for a short time with the Army of the North, together with his two sons, the Duke of Chartres, future King of the French, and the Duke of Montpensier, but had returned to Paris before the insurrection of 10 August, during the Grand Terror after the fall of the monarchy. Philippe risked his own life by saving persons under suspicion by the revolutionary regime, in particular, and at the request of Grace Elliot. He saved the life of Louis René Quentin de Richerberg de Champsonets, the governor of the Tuileries Palace, who was his personal enemy. Philippe accepted the appellation of Citoyen Egalité conferred on him by the Commune. He was elected 20th and last deputy for Paris to the National Convention, where he made no notable contribution other than voting in the king's trial. He voted in favor of the death sentence for Louis XVI. Many citizens of Paris saw this as an attempt by Philippe to overthrow the crown and seize power himself. They believed that not only was the Palais Royal the center for revolutionary and philosophical debates, but that it was also his ground for recruiting and financing riots and rebellious activity. Philip's adherence to republican principles and values did not save him from coming under suspicion, which was especially aroused by the friendship of his eldest son, the Duke of Chartres, with Charles-François de Mauriers. When the news of the desertion of Chartres and de Mauriers reached Paris, all the Bourbons left in France, including Philippe Egalité were arrested on 5 April 1793. First imprisoned in Paris, he was later transferred to the Fort St. John in Marseille, then brought back to Paris in October. During the Reign of Terror, the second phase of which had begun the preceding June with the arrest of the Girondists, as a member of the House of Bourbon, Louis Philippe was shortlisted for a trial, and effectively tried and guillotined in the space of one day on 6 November 1793. Accounts of his incarceration and execution mention his calmness. He was granted a final wish to have a gracious dinner before his execution but, having been stripped of all assets upon his arrest, was unable to take advantage of this concession. Philippe de Layens was buried in the Madeleine Cemetery, in Paris, where Louis XVI, Marie Antoinette and hundreds executed on the Place de la Révolution during the Terror had been buried. His remains were never found. Popular culture. He was portrayed by Joseph Schildkraut in the 1938 film Marie Antoinette and by Jean-Claude Dreyfus in the 2001 Eric Roma film The Lady and the Duke. Children. Louis Philippe de Layens, King of the French. Louis Antoine Philippe de Layens. Louise Marie Adelaide Eugenie de Layens. Louis Charles de Layens. Ancestors. Titles and succession. The 13th of April 1747 to 4 February 1752 His Serene Highness the Duke of Montpensier. The 4th of February 1752 to 18 November 1785 His Serene Highness the Duke of Chartres. The 18th of November 1785 to 6 November 1793 His Serene Highness the Duke of Orleans succeeded to this style on the death of his father, was entitled to this style and rank due to him being the first prince of the blood. Literature Tom Ambrose Godfather of the Revolution The Life of Philippe Galati Duck Dorleans Peter Owen Publishers 2008 ISBN 978 0720613018